the vlog. The daily life. <laughs> So we are in the tiny, tiny little airport in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, and it's quite amusing how tiny it is. It's like there's nothing here at all. At all. And um, should I explain what we're doing yet? I don't know. Maybe not. We're going to Kenya, which is on the thumbnail, so you should already know. Obviously. Coming over. Yep. Are you videoing right now? Yes. What? <laughs> wait, wait, are you videoing right now? Oh my <laughs> <In> your face. <laughs> Oh, no. Some of our good friends came to see us off. <laughs> Didn't want to get in the video, but now you are. Be in one of your videos. <laughs> right, what? exactly. Bye, Gabe. Bye. You already said bye. I know. Hi, I'm going. Yeah, let's board the plane. Boarding, boarding, boarding the plane. Big scared face. Jake is super paranoid about making videos in public, like pointing the camera at people. So let's just keep the camera down low and pretend like we're not doing anything. Plane train. Please hold on. This train is departing. This looks like a mall. Try to get the car. <laughs> yeah. Take it for a drive. It's quite amusing now to see how giant this airport is compared to Jackson. Literally tiny. Do what we gotta do. This is like one of the biggest airports in the world, I think. Okay, so here's what's going on. Right now we're in Atlanta, which is in Georgia, right? We're going to Kenya, Africa, to Nairobi. So we start in Jackson, Mississippi. Now we are flying to Paris, which I've heard is in France. That wasn't even funny. And then from there we fly down to Kenya and we are fixing to be late to board our plane. But first we should probably do a quick introduction or something. That is Zach. Introduce yourself. I'm Zach. I mean, uh, tell him something about you. No. Okay. <laughs> who are you? I'm Dad. <laughs> Mina. <laughs> and that's, there's nothing more to say. I'm Dad. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. That's <laughs> all <No>, you got. <laughs> I gotta give it to him. That is a pretty sweet sunset. Comment and tell him what a beautiful picture that is. It'll boost his self-confidence. Airplane food. What food was that? What's this note uh, here? Talk about the airplane food. Looks terrible. And now they're in France. Ooh, Paris, France. What beautiful countryside! It's a lot of green grass and green. Is, I don't see the Eiffel Tower. No Eiffel Tower. Why are we playing this music? Kill it! Kill it! Doesn't even. I mean, it could be anywhere. So this is really hilarious. Okay, so they get to Paris, and there's no French Paris music like we have on this video. But then they miss the flight. And then they have to spend, like, eight or nine hours waiting for the next flight. That's funny. I'm glad. <laughs> so Jake just sat in the airport for eight hours. 
just sitting there doing nothing. That's glorious. And the time lapse is getting long. Do I have to stick the whole time lapse in here? Okay, that's enough. We'll stop it right there. Oh, here's Jake's dad playing an ancient game. And then finally, boarding the plane. Eight thousand three hundred and thirty one miles. Oh. Okay. I just remembered I haven't um introduced myself and what's going on here. So I will be your commentator for this video. I will be commenting on the video because Jake um was too preoccupied with the actual trip and wanted to like be in the moment and not be thinking too much about narrating to the camera. He's also too shy to narrate to the camera in front of other people. Silly boy. So he left me here and gave me the very enviable task of putting this video together and narrating it and fixing it where he didn't do enough and all of that other glorious stuff. Yeah, he locked me in the shop while he was gone for three weeks. It's been great. I've been having a wonderful time. A very good time sitting here, and sitting here, and sitting here. It's been, it's been really good. I've been able to connect with my inner self. My inner self. Yeah. No. No, it hasn't been good at all. It's been boring. The more I know Jake, the less I like him. He's a terrible human being. I'm sure you're all confused because we look exactly alike. No, we're not the same person. Jake's in Africa right now, and I am not. My name is... Actually, my name doesn't really matter. I am Jake's clone. Jake cloned himself. Yeah. Yes, he's crazy. Yes, I'm awesome, and no, I'm not happy about it. Let's get back to the video. Haha, <laughs> this is funny. So right after getting off the plane, first thing Jake sees is this dude. This mean looking man, who I guess is just a police officer, sitting there with an AK-47. I mean, go for it, bro. Oh, this one. Finally in Africa, man. You can say that again. So guy in the blue sweatshirt is Pastor James. He is the man they will be staying with for a week. And Pastor James brought along his son, whose name is Brian. So a number of introductions, going to the bank, changing out some money and all that stuff later. They all get into his green truck and drive to their house, which is two hours away. the bigger the bigger trucks are all diesel after about an hour and a half of driving on the city roads uh, through the city you turn off onto the dirt <laughs> roads to go up into the mountainous area where they actually live and then you've got about 30 minutes of um, dirt roads up to their house From the look of these roads, it appears that they can best be described as a four-wheeler trail on the terrain of Mars. Hey, welcome, Karibu. 
<laughs> well, we're here. You know, Stephen. Oh. The guy. This is Miss Esther, James's wife. This is uh, Zach. 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 Zach and Jake. Well, this is our room. <laughs> We've now had two overnight flights with not much sleep. And even though it's noon, we're tired. So we're going to rest for a little while. And then we'll do something else. I don't know what. Well, it's now five o'clock. <laughs> I guess I was tired. Yeah, I guess you were. <laughs> Not much happened that first night. They kind of just walked around, then they sat down and had tea. Canyons are real big on tea. Oh, makes it. Uh... And then the sun went down. And they went to bed. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Man, Jake is selfish. What? Those are not yours. Those aren't yours. You can have them. Huh? Oh. Good glory. Now we can't see. Oh, the good Okay, we get it, you're waking up and you're tired. All right, so here we go. I haven't really explained exactly what we're doing here. We are here in Kenya for two weeks. My dad is going oh gosh, to Jake, be- you're talking way too slow. Speaking at a- Okay, you're done. They're there for two and a half weeks. Pastor Stephen Mina, Jake's Padre, is going to be speaking in three African pastors' conferences. One in Machakos, one in Nairobi, and one in Mombasa. The conferences are to help pastors get better, more solid theology, which is much needed in Africa. It's currently Thursday. The first conference in Machako is on Monday. They went a week early so they could spend more time with Pastor James and his family. Jake, you need to get yourself some coffee. You need energy desperately. So, today... I'm just gonna run around with the camera and try to document everything. Slowly opening the door. Look at this. Oh, that's pretty. The view from their house is incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see it through all the trees. Look at that mountain up there. That's a cool mountain. Looks like it should be on like Lion <laughs> King or something. What is that? Some sort of biscuit type deal? Looks like they're cooking it in oil over a fire. Why thank you, Captain Obvious. Showing us how they make like donut things almost. Oh, there, Jake will explain it That's for what us. they're like, aren't they? They're like a beignet except without the sugar on it. He still needs coffee. Washing we, hands before friendly. meals. That's a custom they have yeah. apparently. With a pitcher and a bowl since they don't have running water. Tea, eggs, and those beignet things for breakfast. Time lapse of eating for no apparent reason. Why? I don't know. Reminds me of how hungry I am. One thing Jake and me do agree on. I mean we actually agree on a remarkably large number of things. Pills are terrible, like swallowing pills, it's just disgusting, it's terrible, it's difficult, it's annoying, it's amusing to watch Jake do it. This is dumb. It's not dumb. Did you drop one? Yes it is. It's going to help you maintain your health. A handful, take them all at once. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do, I take every single one of them at once. How? <laughs> That's my only question. How? Just like a bite of food. No. 
Yeah. It's, no, not. it's not. Don't eat <laughs> solid <laughs> capsules of nastiness. So now they're headed off to, jeez, there's a lot of mosquitoes in here, to a school. They brought some, uh, like, gifts, like a ball and some, like, school supplies and stuff to give to the school. The school's there, you know, they're pretty poor. Pastor James also goes around to schools in the area, and he sets up, like, uh, a screen and stuff so they can watch Bible movies, and then he shares the gospel with all the kids, and it's a really great outreach. So that's what they're doing now. But they got sidetracked. So Brian, he heard that we were painters, and he decided he should come take us over to see how they do painting in Kenya. Just so you know here, to clarify, Jake actually doesn't do hardly any painting. That's all me. See, the perks of having a clone that's exactly like yourself is you can force him to do all kinds of things you don't want to do, and then you get a free day. Like, most of the time, going places to be with friends, it's not really Jake, it's me. Because Jake doesn't want to, so he sends me instead. He forces me at gunpoint. Jake pretty much spends all of his time in the shop, actually, working on top secret stuff. I do everything else. I go eat dinner with the family. I go to church and hang out with friends. I go to work and make him money. I do all his chores. I do everything. Your day will come, Jake. One of these days, I'm gonna... So this is one of his relative's new house. I think it's brand new, it looks brand new. And um, they're painting it right now. They build these houses is really cool. Obviously in America, everything's really perfect and precise. Well here, they don't really care. So <laughs> you've got um, bricks, they're just, put together. Nothing is really exact or precise anywhere. It's kind of just like make do sort of building, you know, nothing's level but it doesn't matter. The walls are built of uh, bricks or quarry stones and then over that they'll put cement and um, as you can see then they've got some two by fours type things holding up there but then they've got also just branches as part of the structure holding the roof up. So many of the things they do here are super just ingenious the way they figure out how to do things because you know they don't have access to the kind of materials and things that we have. They figure out how to do it um, much simpler which is really awesome. One thing that's super crazy here is they have such a weird mix of technology and I don't want to say primitive but like um, you know, their original kind of culture and way of doing things. Like, they have a lot of the technology we have. So, you know, they can have internet. We've got Wi-Fi at their house. You know, <laughs> it's just so strange. But then, you know, they still cook over a fire. It's so weird. Don't you love the Coke sign on top of there? <laughs> this is a primary school. It's an elementary school. But that's what so here we are at the school. I think... We're gonna give him a few gifts. I already told him that. Skip ahead. Oh, sweet mama. That's a lot of kids. Yeah. Oh boy. The kids normally. to Jurassic Park or something. So it's about six o'clock now. We uh, skipped out on lunch because we were at the school and it's time for tea. Apparently they like to take tea um, a lot of different times whenever they can. They do this weird thing with their tea. They don't make it like we do where you put hot water and you put your tea in hot water. They put their tea in hot water and milk boiled together. It's not bad. It's different though.
Good morning. It is four o'clock in the morning because we're going to that game park today and we have to get up super early because it's a two hour drive to where it is. And you want to get there early when all the animals are active. Thus four o'clock. <laughs> Hey, what up, sunshine? Hey. You miss me? No. Having fun? Shut up. <laughs> I know you miss me, sunshine. Anyway. Don't, don't call me that. That's not my name. Not my name. It is to your name. I named you. No, you didn't. I make you, I get to name you. That's how this works. Fine. I'm gonna call you Jakob. How dare you? I ought to. <sighs> Hello? Sorry, I forgot what I called you for. Did you, uh, how far are you on that video? I'm like... two-thirds of the way done. Okay, I need that ready to upload by the time I get back. That would be tomorrow. Yeah. Sunshine? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah? No, 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 no. That is not the way you answer me. You answer me, yes, sir. So there's no traffic laws in Kenya, pretty much. I mean, they drive on the wrong side of the road already, but like, there are no stop signs or lights at intersections, which is quite amusing watching these clips because like people are doing everything and um, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty wild. They drive like nutheads. Kenyans also don't have our same ideas of personal space. That's five people in the back seat of a truck that was made to seat maybe three in the back seat. Oh, hold up, hold up. Is that what I think it is? Holy crud it is. That right there is a KFC Kenyan fried chicken. <laughs> so they were gonna get there early, that's why they woke up at four o'clock, but then the car broke down, so... <laughs> Monkey is the smallest monkey in size. You think you can be on the center of that? You can. Uh, yeah, I can, can see it good from here. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. You see him? A lion in this tree. It's just oh, you just. Oh, whoa! What a nice oh, beauty. Oh my goodness. It's just standing in the tree. That's him. Look at him. He's just sitting there. I'm not gonna talk through the game park because I'm kind of tired, but the game park is basically just a big giant fenced in area with a ton of wild animals inside. It's not a zoo, it's nothing like that. It's literally like a lot of square miles of land with a ton of animals that's just fenced. Animals are completely wild. They don't get fed, nothing, they're completely wild. It's just fenced in. And yes, I'm told at some points, animals do escape the fenced area. Yeah.
Hi, hello. Had a shower in two and a half weeks. It's a strange sort of smell. Almost fruity, you know? <sighs> Strange things happen to a guy when he's this bored. Not gonna lie. I counted the number of nails in the ceiling. I wrote a dissertation on the life cycle of a hermit crab. They live for 21 days. I learned kung fu. Caught myself on fire. Oh. Twice. Memorized every digit of pi. Forged a katana. Subscribed to PewDiePie. Found inner peace. Discovered the cure to the common cold. Lost my inner peace. Let me out. Forgot the cure. Oh no, I forgot. And let it go. Let it go. We don't talk about that. All right, now for the tour of the house and land and everything um, they have here. You got a fence all along here. All the farms, as you can see if you look out there, they're all terraced because we're on the side of a mountain. Unfortunately, this year they haven't had enough rain, so none of their crops are going to produce anything. Water is extremely important here. They don't have running water, obviously, um, or electricity. So to have their crops grow, they need water, they need water to drink, they need water to, I mean, they just need water. They have to collect the water when it rains, which is why they have these water tanks. They have quite an impressive water collecting system. They collect water off the roof, in the gutters that feed into water tanks. It's quite impressive, actually. They have a few solar panels up on top of the roof. Can't really see, but they're up there. All right, let's go into the back. Here is where they keep all their cows. Um, there's only one in there right now. I think the uh, the boys have the rest of them out somewhere. These are a couple of toilets, which are just holes in the ground. You can see if we look inside here, it's just a hole. More area here to store their animals' food. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is firewood storage, I think, maybe. And here we have their kitchen, their outside kitchen. Um, there's the stove. It's impossible to breathe in here because of all the smoke. <coughs> okay, now here's their house. Let's uh, go ahead and go in. Take our shoes off. So this is like their entryway. Um, I don't know what else you'd call this. No windows, <coughs> just bars. Um, then another little sitting area. This is their other main kitchen. This is Brian. Say hi. Hi. And here's their living room. Dining living room, room, dining room, everything room. Yeah, this is where we spend time just <coughs> talking and <coughs> hanging out and just like a family room and then also mm -hmm. eating. Yeah, we eat right here have tea right here. These are the batteries that connect to their solar panels and the generator. Charges the batteries and it can use the batteries to power other small things. Got a TV. They have more channels than we do. This is the room Dad's been staying in. That's also where Mama stayed when she was here 23 years ago. 
Right. Right. One interesting thing I haven't told you yet is my mom actually came and lived here for about two months with them, like 20 years ago when she was 19. Pretty awesome that we get to be here and see all the same things. Pretty cool. Back outside and through this door, we get into this little area. This is the banyo. The more civilized bathroom they have with a toilet. Water comes from a water tank. Got a mirror. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> then we got the basin here, which is used for taking a shower. You just fill that basin with water and then take a cup and pour it over you. Excess water goes out a hole in that corner. All right, well, that's everything I think. weird. Alright, he's taking us up to where we have a really good view up high of everything. Now they're at the conferences, and I'm not gonna show too much footage of this because it's boring. But, um, you know, a lot of teaching. Each conference was two days long, and there were three of them. So the first two were right in this area. Um, a lot of good, solid biblical teaching here. Um, his dad wore a suit jacket, which was amusing. Yeah, not, not a lot to say, just, just some b-roll, some nice music, not a lot to say. Then, some more interestingness, the third conference was in Mombasa, which is on the coast of Kenya, like 300 miles away. What do they do? But take a train from Nairobi all the way to Mombasa, which was like five hours or something. That, that's kind of cool. Train, yeah. I'm, I'd like to ride on a train. That sounds fun. I mean, not very, not not fun. Not not fun actually. I'd rather be here, really. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this is our hotel room in Mombasa. We just came from having dinner at one of the uh, church members' house, and it is 10.20. Good night for now. And Mombasa, of course, is on the coast, is on the beach. 
the Indian Ocean, so logically they have to go to the beach too, because because that would also be fun. <laughs> It'd be a ton of fun. <laughs> no way. You need to be sitting down, you're just milking standing up. <laughs> You'd have to have your pail on, on totally. a stool or something. But... Oh man. They're offering us a ride now on a camel. I don't think so. Apparently we are doing the camel. And then the third conference, once again, another two days. And that's, yeah. This is our last day in Kenya. Our flight leaves at like midnight tonight. So what we're about to do, Pastor James is coming back in town and he's going to take us out and we're gonna drive around Nairobi, go to the mall, go to some shops, see if we can pick up some souvenirs or other cool stuff. And then we're gonna fly back home. Yep. Man, what a trip. So I got a GoPro on. Not a real GoPro, of course, because I'm cheap, but we're gonna record our shopping experience. This should be pretty great. And off they went, rode around the city forever because the city's huge. They pulled up to the mall, Jake had his GoPro ready to film, and then he saw the sign that said no filming. So he didn't get any pictures or video of walking around this really awesome Maasai market. He texted me, said he bought a couple of weapons. Sounds cool. I'll be interested to see those. So yeah, that's, that's the trip. That's all the footage he took. That's everything. They just got on the plane and headed back home. Finally, 24 hours on the clock. Shut up. 